This is Boda, an area of Kathmandu, Nepal, known primarily for the famous Buddha stupa and its large Tibetan community. Here you'll find delicious Tibetan dishes to try, such as kima and lapping, and over 50 gompas or Tibetan Buddhist monasteries. Today I'm going to take you on a quick walking tour of Boda, show you a couple of different places to eat, and then end the day hanging out with a very energetic group of novice monks. So I just arrived in the Boda neighborhood of Kathmandu. This is around a uh, 25 or 30 minute photo taxi ride from the center to Mel. And I'm just gonna walk around and show you what there is to see here. Number one, of course, is the Bodhana Stupa. This is one of the most visited places in Nepal. So that's going to be first on the list. And there it is. Bodha Stupa, or Buddha Stupa. I think it has a lot of names. Those of these stupas were originally created to house relics. So some people actually believe that parts of the past Buddha are housed inside. And when you visit a stupa, you should always walk clockwise around it. You'll notice people are walking that direction already, so just go with the crowd. But try not to backtrack the other way, just continue the loop. We have some prayer wheels on the side. Same goes for the prayer wheels. You should always turn them clockwise. One thing you'll see here and in a lot of areas of Kathmandu are these rooftop cafes. Like pretty much every place here has a rooftop. So it's a good spot to grab a drink and enjoy the view. This coffee shop behind me is called Himalayan Java and it's essentially like the Starbucks of Nepal. So you will see it everywhere, especially in Kathmandu. It's usually a great place to get work done. But the Wi-Fi is always fast and you, know, you can get tea or coffee and even breakfast a lot of times. It's not the best coffee. It's really not a good latte to be honest. But this particular location has a really good view of the stupa. So if you get here and you're just kind of like, oh, I don't know where to go. You know, there's so many different rooftop and restaurant options. Go here just for a quick drink or a quick snack and you won't regret it. If you get a good view. Let's pop inside so you can get a good seat by the window. I think it's early enough that it's not too busy at the moment. Oh, this one's open. Let's snag it. And then this view, look how amazing that is. I ordered a Nepali tea, just like a black tea with some spices and milk in it. It's one of the cheapest things on the menu, so pro tip. You can get this for like a dollar and then sit here and have this nice view. Oh, it's too hot to drink right now. I want to show you a giant prayer wheel. Now prayer wheels are something you will see a lot here just because of the Buddhist culture. But before coming here, I just thought that they were typically small, like the ones you see by the stupa. But near the stupa, so like here's the stupa, and in this building right here, there is the biggest prayer wheel I have ever seen. It's in here to the left. There it is. So cool. I was trying to read up a little bit on prayer wheels, and I guess the mantras are written along the outside of it and it's said that spinning the prayer wheel has the same effect as reciting a mantra orally. And I think you just kind of run your hand on the side of it and then walk next to it. The same little building that houses the prayer wheel has a view as well. And you don't have to buy a coffee like the Himalayan Java. She been in this part before. Hi, welcome to Nepal. <laughs> yeah, Nepal. Where are you from? I'm from the U.S. Yeah. Oh, what, what state? Uh, Seattle, oh, Washington. Oh, oh. I live in New York. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Well. Mm -hmm. Do you have family here? Um, yeah, I have some family. I was born here as well. Okay, and then you moved to New York like for school or work? Um, no, all my family lived there. Okay. I'm just living there, and I also go to school there. Oh, super cool. Well, I just met the nicest two girls. One of them is Nepali living in New York and her friend is from Bhutan. So they're just here traveling around for a few weeks. But it was so nice that she said hi and she like gave me some tips of some villages to check out while I'm in Nepal and just wished me well, which was sweet. Hey puppy dog. I am 
am not a fan of pigeons and there are so many pigeons here. Oh my God. Pigeons are just so fluttery and they're everywhere all the time. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're very aesthetic and they add to the vibe, but as long as they stay on the ground. Which way to go? Heard about this cafe. It's supposed to be good and I like the vibe of it. So let's check it out. Got some cakes, brownies. Hi. Uh, just for one. Yeah, I'm still planning to try some Tibetan food while I'm in the area, but when I got to this cafe and I saw muesli on the menu, I had to have it because I just haven't been able to find a lot of breakfast foods that I normally crave here. So yeah, I just need to have this for craving purposes, but then we will get back to the Tibetan food mission, I promise. There's like yogurt. I guess the muesli is kind of cooked into the milk and the yogurt. Mm. This is where you need to go. Let's go inside here. I'm about to try kima for the first time, which is a Tibetan noodle dish with minced yak meat on top. And I heard this is one of the best places to try it. Okay, here's the kima. So this is a Tibetan noodle dish. And then we have minced up yak meat on top. Looks like there's some type of sauce. The noodles are very good, and I like the sauce that's in it. It's also nice to get some greens because I haven't seen that a lot. The sun is starting to set here in Boda, but I have one more stop, and that is a Tibetan monastery. A friend of mine connected me with a girl here who is volunteering at the monastery, and she works with a lot of novice monks who are children. Hey, I'm not totally sure where it is. I kind of think it might be one of these buildings here. The yellow building. Oh, it could be this one, to be honest. Maybe I should ask someone. Hi, excuse me. I'm looking for Segu Monastery. Ah, oh, here. Right here yes. Perfect, thank you. Right here, awesome. Is this open? Oh no. Here? Okay, thank you. Here we go. Oh, oh hi, sorry. Are you Roberta? Yes. Oh, it's so nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. The kids just finished their studies for the day and they're all hanging out, so we're gonna go down and say hi and hopefully play with some of them. Thorpa? Your name? I'm Allison. 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 Or Ali. <laughs> and how old are you? I am Tuville. Tuville? Yes. Tuville. What? <laughs> His age? Tuville? No, you have 11. <laughs> oh, 12. You are 10 last year, so you have 11. No, I'm not here. Hey. Thank you. Yeah, go bro. Do you want to hold? You want to do it? So the kids spend most of the day in school either doing like their formal education or Buddhist teachings. Oh, they're so cute. And now it, once five o'clock hits, then they are free and they get to play and have dinner. So that's what's happening now. What's your name? Mima. Mima? Say hi. Mima. Mima. That's Mima. such a nice name. Mima. How old are you? Yeah. It just says yes to every age. Excuse me. Are you a vlogger? Yeah, on YouTube. Uh, wolves and waterfalls. Yeah. Wolves and waterfalls. Wolves and waterfalls. This is your. This is your. No, this is me. This is your boyfriend. No, he's not my boyfriend. My friend 
Roberta, she is asking them all if they've been brushing their teeth because that's one of the things that they do here is just to promote like hygiene for the kids and remind them the benefits of you know cleaning their room and washing their hands and just keeping their teeth clean so it's really cute she's like are you brushing your teeth you know and then they're like mm -hmm. they don't want to show her here the monastery segu they they have many mini monks they start from four to five years old most of them they come from you know like small villages and the, the parents send them because here they have shelter food and also education and of mm -hmm. course also the teaching of the dharma so it's a very like special place for them because here they're also safe and the parents see the place as a future for them. So. Yeah. And if people want to support, yeah, what's the best way they can like oh, help okay. out? Yeah, well to support the Segu there are many ways. You can also donate to well, our it's website, Segu Monastery. Mm -hmm. And we also have the uh, distance adoption. So you can like Or you sponsor a kid. Yeah. Some type of game going on. Like, I think they're trying to keep it off the ground. The sun is starting to go down, so I'm gonna head back to Tamel, but we're doing a little goodbye here. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, okay, we gotta check. We gotta look. He might be here now. Yeah, he's super close, I think. Let's see. Do we see a motorbike? And with that, our day in Boda comes to an end. There will be many more Nepal videos coming though, so if you like this one, please make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching!